people will always at farmer's market, they'll have a picture or something that, you know, a mushroom is growing in their yard that they want to know what it is. I'm not great at identifying, you know, all the different species of mushrooms. I know what we grow, but I always tell people that it, you know, all mushrooms are edible. Some are just edible once. My name is Trey Balcom, and I'm a mushroom farmer. My name is Zach Taylor. I'm a mushroom farmer, and I live in Northwest Arkansas. We both lived in South Arkansas, and we moved up here, and we were just really kind of in love with the community. We were walking around the farmer's market one day and we thought, hey, we could be the mushroom guys. There's nobody doing it. And we didn't know what the yields were. We didn't know if it'd be profitable. So we just decided to do it at least as a hobby. And it kind of mushroomed into a business. <laughs> Bad mushroom jokes. This time of year at Fat Top Farm, we grow six types of mushrooms. This is a golden oyster. It's got a real distinctive flavor and taste. When you eat them raw, they almost have like a melon taste. Chestnut mushrooms, they have a kind of a nutty flavor. They hold the texture really well. They're my favorite mushroom to put on a pizza. This is a pink oyster mushroom. They're a tropical mushroom. They have a, a meatiness similar to Canadian bacon. This is a blue oyster mushroom. They're our favorite mushroom to grow. They have the best shelf life. It tastes great. If we had to grow one mushroom at Fat Top Farm, it would be blue oyster mushrooms. The best thing about being a mushroom farmer is influencing the way people eat. You're expanding people's horizons just a little bit. When I was a kid, at least in the single digits, I didn't like mushrooms. I, I thought they only came from a can, and I didn't like them at all. One time my mom would just, she's really good at getting me to try stuff. And she had made some fried mushrooms and she, she was like, you gotta try one. Just have an open mind. I did what she said. I tried to forget what I thought before about mushrooms and just focus only on this experience right now. And I liked it. And I was like, wow, 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 wow. So fast forward and just never lost the bug after that. We grow off of stuff that would consider, be considered waste. It's soy holes and sawdust and water. That's it. And that's what mushrooms like to grow on. That's what most things like to grow in. They all look like this once they've soaked up the water. And you can see where they, they're starting, that mushroom mycelium is starting to leap off or expand. This bag right here, it's, it's fully almost fully colonized, or maybe it is fully colonized. It's ready for fruiting. Most everything out here is redneck engineered. We, we built it ourselves. They spend most of their life in more of a warm environment incubating. And when they're all colonized, we move them into this room, which is cool, wet, and the lights on. And that's, those are all three kind of triggers to make them want to produce mushrooms. This is probably four or five days into the process, but it all depends on the temperature. They'll practically double in size every 24 hours at this point. And it's kind of magical watching them. With varying demand, with farmer's markets raining out occasionally, or or chefs canceling orders last minute. You know, we find it hard to, to exactly meet demand. And so we overcame that by processing our mushrooms, by making food products. Essentially how it works is we take the caps, we cut them off and we make jerky with them. And the stems we roast and we make broth out of it. So nothing goes to waste. That's a big deal for us. And this is all thanks to the Arkansas Food Innovation Center at the University of Arkansas. They've been great to us as well. We're a state-certified shared-use kitchen. 
We provide this service to the general community for them to make retail products. Our number one goal is food safety. We show them all, teach them all about that. Each product that Trey does has a unique process. So what we'll do now is we'll add a little bit of our, our sauce and these mushroom caps and they'll cook for about 45 minutes. The sauce is a mixture of tamari, which is a gluten-free soy sauce, brown sugar, and apple cider vinegar. So we'll add these mushrooms to this liquid that's in the kettle. So we'll just spread this out thin and it'll go in the dehydrator and it'll come out looking like this over here. Having an influence on the way people eat is kind of a big deal. Being at the farmer's market and hearing I've never seen that before, hearing that a hundred times a day, it's what makes you keep going when you're not making a lot of money or you know can't afford to pay yourself. Those are the things that keep you going. I'd like to see us in a couple hundred grocery stores with our packaged products. At that point, you're really, you're doing more than just feeding your local community. You may be putting yourself out there to the rest of the world, and that's kind of a big deal. Don't be afraid to experiment with our mushrooms. Uh, you can do anything you want with them. If you like soup, drop them into soup. If you like, a, if you like fried mushrooms, fry them up. Just want to tell the world to eat more mushrooms.